Hello, I wanted to do something a little different today. Uh, I wanted to give a little peek into the inner workings of Luciteria. And uh, these are samples of cubes that we made that came back from the caster busted. And uh, usually we just put these aside. These don't go on sale. But um, I think that uh, they show some uh, interesting, it could be an interesting topic of what goes wrong. Uh, I can, the, the most common type of fail that we have are simply mislabeling. So a cube looks perfectly fine, it's sellable, um, but um, this is not antimony. This is selenium, and that label is in there it cannot be replaced so bummer but you know that's uh, that's the wrong element the caster mixed up the labels and uh, we can't sell it so that's one type of example that happens not so frequently but it's a bummer especially when it's a nice sample because you can't get that out <laughs> it's gone this is no good uh, here's another this one hurts even more because this is a sample of pure phosphorus, the violet kind. Uh, this is the allotrope uh, that is quite expensive, but at least here in the States, it's fully legal to trade them. Uh, there's no issues with selling it as opposed to the red type. Uh, problem is that these sell for I think $185 and this is $185 down the drain because as you can see the sample created a what looks like a, a fracture zone that then clouded over and it's just ugly so if somebody wants this one for a discount uh, they're welcome to contact us uh, there's no getting that out that's permanently in there uh, here well, this is just another mislabeled um, one. This is one of our early cubes that does not have a label inside. It's just printed on one of the prototypes. And it says iron, but that's not iron. That's in there. That's lithium. So that's another sample of a mislabeling. Uh, let's see. This is one of the more interesting ones. Um, xenon comes in pressurized ampules. Now that comes in two varieties, but one of them is a pressurized ampule, which is really cool. And I think we have a video about that elsewhere where the gas goes super critical and you can, uh, if you chill it down, you can see it liquid. And then as it warms up, it seems to disappear and then turns to quote unquote air. Well, because it's a pressurized ampule, uh, when you set it to casting, the casting process itself has its own pressure and if it's too much pressure boom the the ampule breaks in there and it starts expanding as a gas this is xenon in there but it's obviously just not going to it's not pressurized anymore so even though you have a bubble of pure xenon uh, you can't see the effect that of turning it from liquid into uh, you know that super critical phase here's another one and the patterns are pretty cool sometimes uh, you can you can see like a frozen explosion in there and with part of the ampule still um, still inside and it's a bummer because these are really expensive uh, a couple hundred bucks for each one of these um, that's Part of the reason why it's so expensive is because we get a lot of these that are busted that can't be sold. So, you know, we have to uh, add the cost into the ones that do make the cut. This is another example similar to that. I have a couple here that show the a bigger ampule that breaks in the casting process due to pressure and that the this material the lucite acrylic is cured under both pressure and heat so if the ampule inside can't 
take it anymore it implodes and you can see actually the resin that, that's uncured it's actually like spaghettiing inside uh, and turning into goop and whatever sample was caught in there that we tried to keep without oxidation and that bit the dust and it oxidized because the air got in there and this is how it came out of the caster. Caster doesn't know any better. These, they just send it just like it is and we gotta pay for it. This is uh, one lithium and one praseodymium. So those no good either. Another one, this is gallium. This is an interesting one because nothing went wrong really, except that gallium, as many of you know, is a very low melting metal that um, once it becomes, we, we send a sample as a, as a nugget and they place it in there, one layer first, and then uh, once that hardens enough that it can support the weight of the sample, then they pour the top part uh, of the mold. And what happened here is that the gallium melted during the curing process and started making you can see sort of a plane of melted and it reached all the way to the very edge and you can't really see it here but um, if you ran your fingers over it you could feel uh, a little bump right where that touches the uh, the plastic so this also can't be sold just on aesthetic reasons. There's, it's nothing that the caster can control. It's totally unpredictable. Um, but we feel, you know, you can't really even leak it out anymore. But since it's touching the wall, it's just not very attractive. Uh, but that's particular to just this metal, gallium. Let's see. Here, this was the story on this one is rather sad this is the one we probably will try to recover the sample because it's thorium metal which is extremely rare uh, in commerce it's pr practically common if that's the right word in nature but in in commerce because it's slightly radioactive and it has no real uses uh, there's nobody making it so uh, we located just a tiny sliver of this metal and you can see how it uh, in here it's it's nice and shiny but the gel that's around it turned opaque and sort of leaked out of its little inner cube and obviously that's not gonna fly for something that we're asking nearly a thousand dollars for um, so we're, we're going to have to try and drill this out or something and see if we can recover that to be recast. Thorium metal. Uh, last one. This is similar also to gallium. Germanium is um, a metal that is very shiny. It's not really a metal. It's a metalloid, and it's quite beautiful. Um, we sell a lot of these uh, samples. Um, has very shiny surfaces but no good one when it gets too close to the edge and you can see here once the the cube came out of the mold they started polishing it and I don't know if it was during the polishing process or during the casting process but it fractured uh, because uh, it's just too close to the edge it actually touches the edge although I can't feel it when I run the fingers over it but um, that that's enough to make it a no-go as far as putting it on sale but anyway I, I i hope you found this interesting if you have questions let me know i know many of you will ask well can i have it for free i don't know maybe if you buy a cube i'll uh, i'll send one out <laughs> if you don't mind it uh, you're not going to advertise it uh as us uh, selling defective items uh, oh that's me hi hey there Anyway, uh, this is Raciel for Luciteria, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.